Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League was a game that had a lot of hype behind it. People were hoping that it would make for a genuinely good Suicide Squad game because the teasers we saw looked pretty impressive, but unfortunately we found out it was going to be another live service title and all of that excitement died and they faced massive backlash over that. But now, less than a month before release, they have decided to delay the game by almost a full year, leading to a lot of questions. I have a few different things I want to show off, but before we get into the topic, if you enjoy the content that I create, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Follow me on social media like Twitter or mine so that you can see when my content is posted, and of course if you do really enjoy the videos and the live streams that I create, please consider becoming a Dark Titan via Patreon or a supporter via YouTube membership. So I wanted to start off with this article, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League's Delay is Unprecedented. Where do Rocksteady even go from here? And honestly, I wasn't expecting a delay. A couple of months ago, we saw the full trailer and we also saw gameplay at a showcase, but now they have decided to delay it by a significant amount of time. I understand that a lot of games now usually go through at least one delay. Two doesn't surprise me that much either, but we are heading on multiple delays for this title. It says Rocksteady has delayed the game to February 2024, pushing its live service superhero game back almost an entire year after a very polarizing gameplay reveal. We all expected the studio to take a few months away from the spotlight to re-examine the experience, but this sh sort of shift is significant. The game is presumably nearing the the finish line in terms of development, with the original release date close enough that I imagine the dev was busy polishing things up ahead of launch and that is definitely not the case anymore. Yeah, they were supposed to actually release it next month and now they're delaying it by nearly a year, which is pretty shocking. You'd think that they would come out and say, hey, it's really not done. We need a lot more time with it. Or maybe they are reconsidering some of the features that they were putting into game, specifically uh, the monetization. So maybe they are going to, you know, revamp the monetization system, but I really don't see them doing that. Yes. It faced a lot of backlash after we saw the gameplay, after we heard that it was live service, but those were core problems that they can't change unless they completely scrap the game, like with the characters and the gameplay. People were very upset that all of them looked pretty much the same. None of them were boots on the ground. Yes, they all had slightly different primary weapons, but they all played very similarly from what we understood. You can't change that in a year delay unless you're completely scrapping the game. Also with monetization, they've put a lot of time and a lot of thought into it already. How can we sucker people into opening up their wallets and shoveling us cash? I just don't see them completely changing that. If they did, I would be pleasantly surprised but again, that would be a lot of work for them. This new delay has fans assuming Rocksteady plans to butcher all of the game's live service elements and replace them with something more palatable, but I don't think that this is possible without leaving a glaringly obvious wound behind. That's what I'm saying. I just don't foresee them doing that. Its focus on online co-op and progression revolving around loot and leveling up sits at the bedrock of Suicide Squad, and tearing out any trace of it would leave behind an inconsistency that nobody will be able to ignore. I've also on this channel talked a lot about other live service games and just how they uh, typically crumble and die. I don't see a live service game doing well anytime soon unless companies really listen to some of the ideas that fans have said they could implement and unfortunately when it comes to live service games yes we do typically get really crappy monetization systems here is a list of five of the you know uh, live service games that have tried and epically failed. Number one is Anthem. This was a game that I personally was really excited for. I was very hopeful for it, hearing that it was a mix between like 
Halo in Call of Duty was really cool, but unfortunately it came out and it was just a nightmare. It really had a lot of problems and a lot of the broken loot systems in the game just killed it. Then we had uh, Fallout 76, another nightmare. You can see a very clear trend with all of these games is that companies have rushed them out. They have launched in very buggy and broken states. And while yes, something like Fallout 76, now all of these years later, is playable and a lot of people actually do like it now that they have fixed it up and released new content, we will always remember the controversy surrounding its launch. You also had Battlefield 2042. I almost never refund games because I try to give them a chance even months after release, but this is one that I played for maybe an hour max and then I had to refund it. It was so broken and of course the monetization in it was just really shitty. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is also on this list and this is the one that personally makes me the most sad because I really enjoyed the first Star Wars Battlefront, you know, reboot in 2015. I thought that it was pretty good, even though, of course, it did have some minor problems, but Battlefront 2 was just so vastly different. I was so disappointed with it, and we have gotten some good Star Wars games over the past few years, but this was supposed to be an even better version of the first Battlefront that they rebooted. And oh my god, it was going to have so many more maps and characters and features. And well, of course, the launch itself had a catch. And that was simply that EA wanted even more money from players. And now we get to the game that Suicide Squad has been compared to the most, Marvel's Avengers. This has been a nightmare from start to finish. They are finally going to, uh, you know, slowly but surely give up on this game, I guess is the best way to put it. They are, you know, putting out the last little bit of content they have for the game. They've given players tons of free cash shop items because they're going to be shutting the cash shop down. This game is dead only a couple of years after launch, and this is what I'm afraid is going to happen to Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. They're very similar, of course. You have the superhero theme, a lot of the live service uh, information that we have on the game seems very close to Marvel's Avengers, and I am pretty freaking worried for this game. Obviously, I don't want titles to release and for them to be failures. I want things to come out and be really fun and enjoyable and good, but this is a game that already has a bunch of major issues behind it, and yes, they are delaying it by almost a year, meaning they are doing something major to this title behind the scenes. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this and of course found it important and informative, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.